Hello and welcome to today's video on DNA, also known as your biological code. So as we progress through this, we'll be discussing a little bit of the history as well as the structure of DNA. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'll see you on the next slide. So the definition. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the molecule that contains genetic information and directs the activities of the cell. Now DNA contains the instructions cells use to make proteins. Now proteins are very important because these proteins can go ahead and be used to make new bones, muscle, cells, and a wide variety of other things that the body needs. The history. So there were a bunch of scientists that led to the discovery of what we know about DNA. First of this, uh, first of these individuals was Rosalind Franklin. Now Rosalind Franklin went ahead and took x-ray photos of the DNA molecule, which helped to go ahead and determine its shape. So this is Rosalind, and this was her original photo. And if you go ahead and take a look, you can clearly see that the DNA itself has a helix or X-shaped pattern. This was vital in going ahead and determining the shape, structure, and makeup of the DNA molecule. The next two we need to go ahead and discuss are James Watson and Francis Crick. These two individuals were given credit for building the first accurate DNA model and are normally given credit for determining its shape. So there is Watson and Crick, and they determined that from their model that DNA was indeed a double helix. Kind of like a ladder if you go ahead and twist it. So the structure of DNA. The monomers or building blocks of DNA are known as nucleotides. And a nucleotide is comprised of three different parts. We have the sugar, the deoxyribose, we have the phosphate, and we have the nitrogen base. So this is kind of what we're looking at here. So if you take a look, we have our sugar, which is right here. We have our phosphates, which are right here. And we have our nitrogen base, which is found over here. So of the four different nitrogen bases, there are two different types. The first type are purines. So adenine and guanine are purines. And if you go ahead and take a look, these have two ring-like structures. So we call these double rings. So if you take a look, it has two carbon rings. Meanwhile, pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine. These only have one ring. So their entire structure is comprised of just one carbon ring. Now the nitrogen bases always bond to the deoxyribose or the sugar molecule of the nucleotide. So if you take a look, we have our phosphate group here. We have our sugar here, followed by any one of the four nitrogen bases, either adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. So the nucleotides go ahead and bond to form a double-stranded molecule called a double helix. So it kind of looks like a ladder if you went ahead and twisted it. Now the deoxyribose and the phosphate molecules make up the rails or the outside of the ladder, as you can see right here. So these make up the outside. Meanwhile, the nitrogen bases, A, T, C, and G, make up the steps or the inside of the ladder. And they will always bond to what they call their complement. So if you take a look, C will always go with G and A will always go with T. Now this has a very specific name, which we're going to go ahead and discuss in the next slide. This is what we call Chargaff's rule. So Chargaff's rule states that adenine A always bonds to thymine T. So A will always bond with T. Meanwhile, guanine will always bond to cytosine. So G and C will always pair up. So A to T. C to G. Make sure you keep that in mind. The chemical structure of DNA. The nitrogen bases use weak hydrogen bonds to go ahead and hold the two strands together. And the two strands of DNA run in the opposite direction so our nitrogen bases can go ahead and correct, uh, sorry, connect at the right point. So if you take a look, the way these run is from a five to three prime end. So five prime, uh, five prime being the top, three prime, being the bottom. And if you go ahead and take a look at the strand on the right, it runs in the opposite direction. So it runs from the three prime to the five prime. Now this is important because this is the only way that we'll have these hydrogen bonds go ahead and line up and connect our nitrogen bases correctly. 
If it weren't for that, well, we could go ahead and run into a problem. Namely, things wouldn't go ahead and line up the way they needed to, meaning our DNA wouldn't be held together that well. Now, the question here is, is that inside each cell, we have roughly two meters of DNA. Now, two meters is quite tall. It's over about six feet. And the nucleus of a cell is about two micrometers long. So two micrometers is point zero 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 two meters long. That's not a lot. So the question is, how exactly does two meters of DNA fit into this amount of space? What we use here is something called supercoiling. So the first step is our DNA goes ahead and wraps around something called a histone protein. So as you can see, we have our DNA and it is currently wrapping around a histone. Now these histones will then go ahead and form something called a nucleosome. So the next step is number two, our nucleosomes start to go ahead and coil. From here, the third step is the coil will coil one more time creating a supercoil, and these are what our chromosomes are made of. So, in short, what it's trying to go ahead and tell you is, simply put, a chromosome is nothing more than supercoiled DNA. So inside one chromosome, we can have hundreds of thousands of base pairs, hundreds of thousands of nucleotides, each going ahead and corresponding to different genes, which represent ultimately what you look like and where things can be located. So with that, that is going to go ahead and close up shop today on the introduction to DNA. If you have any questions, please go ahead and feel free to contact your instructor. They'll help point you in the right direction. As always, thank you very much for your time. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.